Hi guys, so can I start with a, a little bit of a straw poll? Uh, who here is uh, a parent, has kids? So when you look at the news and you look at what's happening to society in terms of the way that we read the news, are you confident or are you not confident that your kids are going to grow up into a society where they can believe what they read in the press? Not confident. Right. So I, uh, <laughs> the title of the talk kind of says it all, right? We have created a model for ourselves which uh, I don't think is good for our future. So a lot of us get our news from Google and Facebook and YouTube's particularly bad at this sort of thing. And these companies are based on the premise that they can farm our attention for clicks and for selling adverts, uh, for selling pre-roll and so on and so on. And a lot of them are run on machine learning models which appear to have learnt that selling incrementally more extreme points of view help to keep our attention. And so these platforms are almost on their own radicalizing people against, uh, whether it's a political radicalization or whether it's radicalization towards uh, veganism, which is not particularly radical, but the model works, uh, or whether it's, uh, whether it's inciting riots in Germany two years ago, two and a half years ago, I think. Um, the problem is their motivation is to keep our attention. It isn't to spread meaningful discourse around any particular social or political issue. So this creates a massive echo chamber. And what happens is if you, uh, like even Apple News, which you would think is pretty benign, if you tend to read a particular publication on Apple News, it will tend to give it to you more. If you search for a political issue on Google, it will give you publications which you tend to read because they want you to click, right? That's their service. And they want to give you good results, in inverted commas, which is to give you stuff that you're likely to read, stuff that reflects your own bias, and reflects your own opinion, and leads you to double down on that opinion, which we all like to do. So echo chamber is a rabbit hole, depending on how pessimistic you want to be about it. So what we're doing with OneSub is to try and build a platform which allows you to access the same news that you would otherwise access. We're not producing any content. Uh, we're not even producing our headlines at the moment. Uh, we're just sending you to subscribers, uh, to publishers, sorry. But what we're trying to do is to give you a platform where you can have confidence that you're building yourself a balanced view of the news landscape about any topic. And I want to talk a little bit about how we're doing that. Um, so there are three steps. Uh, sorry, so I'll tell you a little bit about the platform first and then how we do it. So the platform provides you um, what we refer to as like a what three things do I need to know approach to reading the news. So rather than, uh, rather than giving you an endless scroll, which is a pretty addictive um, behavior, we try and find three stories that are important to you in any particular day. And it's personalized. So your three stories and your three stories will be different. Um, then we monitor what you read. And by using machine learning techniques to understand the articles, we're able to then build you a profile, which we show to you and we're very transparent about it, to give you an indication of what you've read and what sort of bias and opinion you've ingested. And then we give you, uh, either through the app on a daily basis or through a share extension, which I'll show you, we give you instant access to alternative perspectives on any publication or any article that you're reading. So in terms of the, the sort of technology, the machine learning model of it, there are three steps we think about. So the first is comprehension of the article. <clears throat> so we are scraping a huge amount of content. And uh, there's a sort of technical step, which is less machine learning and more kind of old 1990s tech, of trying to get the article out of the page without all the other cruft. Having got the article out of the page, what we're then trying to do is to build a model of the sentiment and the bias, the accuracy, the reliability of the article. And there are lots of signals for that in terms of tone of voice and use of words and amount of citation of different sources and so on. What we're then trying to do is to understand the ontology. And the ontology landscape is pretty daunting. It's, it's like our, it's our central and kind of biggest task. So I, I've discovered a, a deep fake Trump Twitter account at COGX, COGX today. Somebody showed it to me. Uh, so I've stolen his Twitter 
uh, handle, and I love it. Um, so Trump is a good example, because in any one article, Trump is a person, or well, nearly. Um, he's a, a son, she's a daughter, it's an organization, it's an administration. So there are lots of different uses. And identifying the administration and the organization against a person is easier. But identifying which Trump is being talked about is quite difficult. And they're often talked about in the same article. Now, that's just one word. And we're already tracking about half a million different important words across the media that we're scraping. And understanding that ontology and how that changes from one article to the next is a real challenge for us. Now, the third step. <coughs> is the clustering. So in order for us to give you a perspective of the news landscape, we need to understand what a story is. Now, if you take a snapshot of the day's news at the end of the day, let's say, it's quite easy to determine here is a particular story. So here is Boris and Gove, and they're running for prime minister. But over the course of an actual day, as we're serving content to people, the news landscape changes, which is why I kind of think of it in terms of this lava lamp. Because Boris and Gove running for office is one thing, but Boris going to court for his bus and Gove doing things we probably shouldn't talk about, they suddenly diverge as two different stories. And we have to be cognizant of the fact we don't want to start feeding you another story. But depending on when you hit the platform, we need to think about which is the most important story to serve to you. Now, within those stories is then a whole set of articles from various publishers. And again, what we're trying to do is based on each individual's readership and how much you've read of each article, and we ask for feedback when you come back from an article of did you read it, did you just skim read it, and so on. We're trying to give each individual uh, a set of three articles which help them to build a balance around their latent sense of a particular topic to give them just a little bit um, Potentially a slightly more extreme, but then also a slightly more moderate view of any particular topic. Now, a particular article is not about a particular topic. It's actually about 100 topics. And so the modeling is a bit more complex. So the experience, there's two ways. As I say, you can either go to the app and, and read it as a news service. The other way, that, and the one that interests me the most, is this. So you can be on anything like Apple News or Google or Facebook or Twitter or whatever. And as long as you can access the share extension, as long as the share extension will give you the, the link to the article, you can fire the article into OneSub in the same way as you might fire it into WhatsApp, uh, into WhatsApp sorry, to send it to a friend. Now, what that will do if it hasn't seen the article before is it will go away and it will read the article and it will do all of that learning and understanding on the fly. So we've got to get this to the point at which you can do it in a couple of seconds. And it will then feed back to you a set of articles from different publications that allow you to then go away and read something slightly different to what you've already read. Uh, like so. Uh, it's available on desktop and iOS and Android coming in in sort of 10 days or so. Um, and also the Chrome plugin so that as you browse, we can give you uh, alternatives in page over the, over the top of the publication. Um, and I'm very happy to answer any, any questions, really. Um, that's it.